Hey everybody, welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. I'm Brian Stewart. We're on lesson seven right now. Do you hear that? What? Do you hear what? Oh, I'm just kidding. That's the name of the lesson, right? Do you hear that? Do you hear that? We're going to focus on let's learn what sound is. So we're going to study about sound. What exactly is sound? When we talk about things like sound or sight or smells, that's an area of science. So we're talking about science in this lesson. First of all, what is sound? You know, when we talk about sound, sound is something that we hear through our ears. Whether it's somebody who's yelling, somebody who speaks in a loud voice, loud voice, so they could be yelling, yell, to yell, he's yelling, or he's shout, shouting, right, shouting. So sometimes we hear loud sounds when people are speaking in a loud voice. They're shouting or they're yelling. I'm not shouting or yelling, I won't do that to you, but I'm not whispering either, right? Pandiro, yelling or shouting, is whisper, 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 very small sound, whispering, okay? Now down here, <laughs> this is a problem with electronic devices, your computers, your uh, music players, somebody's playing loud music, ah, it's too loud, please, please turn it down. Turn it down means turn down the volume. It's too loud. He will say to his friend, hey, please turn it down. It's too loud. Okay, let's talk about some vocabulary having to do with sound. The first word is to hit hard. When something hits something very hard, like lightning comes from the sky and hits the ground hard. What do we say? We say it's strike. And this is a good picture because usually we call uh, this type of action lightning strike. If the lightning touches the ground, we say, where did it strike? Where did it strike ground? But there's other things we can talk about when we strike something. If we're playing a drum, we strike the drum with a, a drumstick and we make a sound. So to strike, to hit something hard, strike. Okay, number two. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> very strange people. Now, it's, it's kind of hard to have pictures when you're describing a sound, right? So some of these pictures we have to think a little bit, okay? This is a picture of a sound telling of a danger. These people are not crazy. <laughs> they're, supposed to be, they're supposed to be very frightened or scared. Why? Because they heard a sound that tells them of danger. What kind of sound tells you of a danger? If there's a fire in your apartment building, what can you hear? Some sound will go off telling you, be careful, there's a fire. We call that sound an alarm a fire alarm. If a robber or a bad person breaks a window to get into a store at night to steal something, then a burglar alarm will go off. A burglar, burglar, a burglar is the bad person, the criminal who breaks into the store. A burglar alarm, a fire alarm. That's a sound that tells you, hey, danger, there's something bad happening. Three, now a message, a message telling that something bad may happen. Not an alarm, it's before an alarm, right? You see a sign that says, be careful, Joshim Hale, something bad might happen. The word we want actually is on the sign itself. It's a warning, 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 Joshim Hale, right? Mori Joshim Hale, watch for your head, right? Watch your head. Or in this case, don't go on the land. Don't go past this sign. It's dangerous. Warning, warning. 
It's something, it's a message that tells us something bad may happen. We should pay attention to warnings. Look at warnings. They will help keep you safe. Okay, next one. Number three. Number four. How high or low a sound is. Now, when we talk about sound, and we'll look at this more in the reading, you can say a sound is high or low in terms of what? In terms of pitch. Now, when you say high sound or low sound, think of it this way. An alarm clock, you know, might sound like this. Ding, 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 ding. That's a high sound. Alarm sounds don't sound like this. Boom, 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 boom. That's a low sound, okay? So you have a high sound and you have a low sound. When we talk about that, we're talking about the pitch. Pitch. What is the pitch of the sound? Usually we say it's a high-pitched, high-pitched, high-pitched or low-pitched sound, right? I'll give another couple of examples. A small dog, right? A small dog goes, yip, yip, yip. That's a high-pitched sound. But a big dog goes, ruff, 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 right? That's a low-pitched sound. So high-pitched sound, low-pitched sound. We're talking about pitch. Number five. <laughs> What's wrong? She's so, she's so crazy. She's really angry, right? How loud or soft a sound is. Maybe she's crying, she's screaming. Now we're talking about loudness or softness. Remember before I told you if something's too loud, you say turn it down. You want to turn down the volume, okay? So we have a loud sound, the volume is high. A soft sound, the volume is low. I can't hear it, right? Please turn up the volume. So high volume, low volume. And as you can see, we also use high pitch, low pitch. So we use the words high and low to talk about pitch or to talk about volume. High pitch, high volume. Low pitch, low volume. But they're different things, right? Pitch and volume are two different things about sound. Okay, number six. Again, it's hard to draw a picture or to show a picture of a sound, in this case, to make a long, deep sound. Here you have to imagine, you know, if you see a lightning storm, right? You see lightning, but after the lightning, what do you hear after the lightning? You hear thunder, right? And thunder is a long, deep sound. It is a rumble, rumble, the rumble, right? Especially if you hear, uh, see the lightning, it's very close to you. Then you hear, and it goes, brrr. it's not the big thunder that, that happens right away. That's not long. That's very short. It's bang, whoa. But then you can hear the rumble for a little bit afterwards. It's very deep and surrounding sound brrr, in the sky. That's a rumble. Also, if you're hungry, your stomach will rumble, right? Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, pegopa, right? It's time to eat, so your stomach might rumble, okay? Okay, next one. Uh, to shake quickly. These guys are uh, street construction crew. Before they uh, change the street, they have to break the street up. So they use a jackhammer. This is a jackhammer. And the way the jackhammer works is it moves up and down very quickly to shake. What is it doing? Is it like this? It's vibrating, to vibrate, vibrate, okay? To shake quickly back and forth is to vibrate. Okay, number eight, to pull and then let go. To pull and let go. You can all say, what are they doing with the guitar? They are plucking the guitar. Not right now. Right now they're tuning the guitar. But after they do that, then he or she, I'm not sure, <laughs> okay, because long hair, I don't know. Um, he or she is going to uh, touch this, the strings, but pluck the strings very quickly. Going to pull the string and then let go. And that's how many string instruments are played. You pluck the strings. Tick, 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 
right? You pull them quickly and then let go. You pluck. You also maybe pluck your hair. Don't do that, but some people might do that. They pluck to pull and then let go. Pull the hair, let go. Pluck. Now this person is a referee, a referee at a game. Maybe you're playing soccer or you're playing uh, baseball or something. And the referee has a whistle, a whistle. And when he blows that whistle, right, there is a loud, high-pitched sound coming from the lips or whistles. What is that? It's a whistle, the same one that I just wrote up there. So we call this, this um, instrument, you can't see it, it's made of metal, but what he has in his mouth, it's a whistle. Also, it's a verb. So this whistle that I put up here, this would be a noun, and a high sound coming from lips or whistles, well, of course, the sound is a, is a noun, but you can also say to whistle, and that is a verb. So whistle can be a noun, whistle can also be a verb if you use to whistle. For example, can you whistle? Can you whistle? I am whistling. But the sound I'm making, that is a whistle. So whistle can be noun or verb. 10. A loud warning sound. We talked about uh, this a little bit before. A loud warning sound. We talked about alarm. But alarm can also be siren, especially on a fire truck or a police car. We say the siren. Can you hear the sirens? The police are coming or the fire truck is coming. That's a siren. We can also call those alarm. When a fire truck goes to a fire, if there are two fire trucks, we say it's a two alarm fire. That means two fire trucks came, two alarm fire. Two fire trucks came to put out the fire. If it's a five alarm fire, well, that's a big fire five fire trucks came. Okay, so alarm and siren, very similar. But usually we say siren is on a vehicle. It's the noise or the, the, the object that makes the noise. Number 11, something that is asked, right? He has a question. This boy has a question. Raise your arm if you have a question. Question is something that is asked. Okay, next one opposite of forward. So this girl, I, she's kind of looking this way, but she could be looking behind her. Forward pandero is very simple, back. Or you could also put backward, right? Forward, back, or backward. Sometimes people don't say ward, they just say back. Of course, you can also say front. Front, back. Frontward or forward, backward. Don't say frontward. Uh, forward or backwards. Usually forward though is used for motion. He is walking forward. Look forward. Backward, walk backward. Look backward. But if you're talking about, for example, uh, somebody's, uh, where somebody's thing is, this is my front, this is my back. So you could say both things, right? Look forward, look to the front, or this is your front, look back, look backward, or this is my back. Okay, so forward and back. 13, huh, very interesting picture. They're very dressed up. Softly, softly means what? It means gently. He is gently, uh, he's a gentleman, so he's acting very gently, right? Gently is softly, not hard. For example, if you're playing an instrument like the drum before I said to strike, you hit something hard, you can play a drum gently or softly, making a little bit of noise. Do, 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 do. You're playing it gently. Okay. Okay. Oh, here we have a dinosaur, right? The part of the body between the head and the shoulders. Here's the head. Here's the shoulder. So what is this part of the body between the head and the shoulders? And of course, on a dinosaur, it's very long. Also on a giraffe it's very long. We say it's the neck, right? The neck is the part of the body between the head and the shoulders. On me, on people, the neck is very short. 
on dinosaurs, some dinosaurs and giraffes, the neck is very long. Okay, a long thin rope. What is this rope that this person is tying around their finger? We call that a string, a string. You, pro you might have strings in your shoes to close your shoes up. You probably have strings in your backpack, right? Maybe you have uh, strings in your backpack to close pockets. Strings are very useful. Okay, our last word, forward. Forward means forth, okay? Now, we use forth, and by the way, that might be hard to pronounce, F, 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 forth, for, and then R, right? And T-H, forth, forth, okay? So what he's doing is his voice is coming forth, right? Uh, his air is coming forth. His s sound is coming forth from his mouth. So it's coming forward, right? It's going forward from his mouth. But when you speak, the sound is coming forth from your mouth, okay? So that's interesting. That's a, a where you would probably use that word. Okay, let's take a look at the exercises, the first exercise here. Complete each sentence with a word from the box. We have many different sentences. We have blanks in those sentences. We have to fill those blanks with words from the box. What are the words? The words are strike, strike, alarm, alarm, warning, warning. Then we have rumble, rumble, vibrate, vibrate, pluck, pluck, pitch, pitch. Remember with this P sound, you've got a P, P, right? So pluck, pitch, okay? Next one, volume, V sound, V, volume volume. Okay, those are our words. Let's see how they fit into the sentences. Number one, people ran to the underground passage when they heard the fire what? Now remember, in times of danger, there's a sound that comes out and it warns people of danger, right? You hear it. You hear the fire what? What is that sound? It's the alarm, the fire alarm the burglar alarm. Okay, it's an alarm. It's a sound that says something bad is happening. Be careful. Okay, number two. I was so hungry that, so adjective that. Good construction. I was so hungry that I could hear my stomach what? Remember when I talked about this word, I gave two examples. One was the thunder, you know, the thunder in the sky after a lightning strike. Brrrm. But you can also hear very more, more commonly when you get hungry, your stomach will make a gold, gold, gold sound. It will do what? It will rumble. I was so hungry that I could hear my stomach rumble. Okay, number three. Birds sing at a really high what? When you hear birds, they're like, they're not like, ooh, 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 right? So what is that? Remember we talked about that. A high sound, it's like a little dog barking. Yip, yip, yip. That's also a high what? It's a high pitch. Birds sing at a high pitch. I've never heard a bird sing in a low pitch. Right? That would be very strange. I'd be scared. What kind of bird is that? Okay. Usually birds will sing in a very high pitch, a very high pitched noise. Let's move on to number four. The police gave me a beep not to go near the building. So the police are telling me, don't go, not to go. Don't go near the building. Why? Because it's dangerous. And it's a message that the police giving me. The police are giving me a message telling me not to go somewhere. They are doing what? They are giving me a warning. They are giving me a warning not to go somewhere. Five, I can't hear the radio. Turn the beep up. This is an example I gave you. Remember at the very beginning, we saw the boy, right? He was is too loud, so he says, turn it down. Please turn it down. 
but sometimes if the what is very low, you can't hear it, you want it to turn up, you're turning up what? What are you turning up so that you can hear something? You're turning up the volume. Turn the volume up. Or pandero, turn the volume down. But if you can't hear, if you can't hear, it's too low. The volume is too low, turn the volume up. Six, watch the violinist, somebody who plays the violin, beep the string gently. Remember I said many people who play an instrument that is a string instrument, like a guitar, a violin, a harp, right? What are they doing? They're grabbing the strings and they're letting go. They pull and let go. They are plucking. Watch the violinist pluck the string gently. Usually violinists don't pluck the string, right? They have a bow and they, they rub the strings. But sometimes they might pluck the strings to make a sound also. Some violinists do that. Okay, seven and eight. Lightning may beep the tree during a thunderstorm. So this is like lightning might come down and hit the tree hard. Of course, lightning hits hard with a lot of energy, right? So it might come down. And remember, this is a very common word used with lightning. What word was it? We said strike. Lightning may strike the tree during a thunderstorm. Number eight, I felt my cell phone beep in my pocket. So if you have a cell phone, right, and like me right now, I don't want my cell phone going off because I'm talking to you. If my friend calls me, it interrupts us. So I turned my cell phone on a different mode so it will shake. You don't know. I know because it's in my pocket. I can feel it, but there's no sound. I left. I felt my cell phone, what, vibrate in my pocket, right? Right? You can feel your cell phone vibrate. So turn off your phone, obviously, in class or if you're doing something important, but you can keep it on vibration mode. You can feel it vibrate. Okay, well, that wraps up the vocabulary section of the lesson. Let's take a short break here. We'll come back and do the reading.